Hello and welcome to today's camper van chat in which I'm going to be talking about electrical vehicles. Now I'm always going on about it because I really believe in this technology. Of course there are no genuine mass produced electric camper vans yet. I'm sure one or two people have made a little van out of uh, some vehicle but it's uh, not um, done on any scale as yet. Now I'm going to comp continually go on about this but what I want to do now let's have some film of some electronic uh, uh, my, my favorite one here from Deathless for example and what is interesting now is that the Automobile Association which is the UK one of the two UK uh, uh, car clubs or, or large car clubs or traditional car clubs there's quite a lot of them now but it's the AA and the RAC but the AA's formed a partnership with Charge Mass which is the UK's largest provider of EV charging infrastructure and this should help those AA members who already own or are considering an electric vehicle. Uh, the AA have uh, now been training their patrol uh, people to um, how to charge a vehicle that's broken down <laughs> or needs charging as well as how to deal with breakdowns. The AA is going to use the Polar Network which is the UK's largest EV charging network which is operated by ChargeMaster and provides access to over 5,000 charging points throughout the UK and it will have of course the emergency backup charging solution for its patrols in the what they term unlikely event of somebody running out of charge. Of course uh, I think it's probably easier to run out of electricity than it is to run out of uh, petrol or diesel and let's face it we've all done it. So A patrols will be carrying polar RFID well, RIFID, which is a radio frequency identification FOBs and an AA member if an AA member is stranded with an empty battery they will turn up and get them on the way as soon as possible. And I'm led to believe that the AA will offer this at least the first time free of charge. I don't know how many times they will allow you to get away with that though, because I'm sure they don't want to be called out every day. So uh, in the UK, there's about 300 new charging points going in every month. And uh, I think it's natural to sort of worry about uh, running out of electricity. I think this is more, more the case really with petrol or diesel because at least you know petrol or diesel we've all got a spare can and we can sort of walk to the petrol station and uh, uh, char get, get some more fuel. Now in the UK there's now 14,000 public charging points and um, you know, with 10 new ones every day, that number is really going up quickly. If we consider that the average UK journey is less than 16 kilometers, 10 miles, then really it is not so much a problem. What is interesting is the uh, for delivery vehicles, and we know from studies, for example, by Renault that the average uh, van does around 90 uh, delivery van around uh, town will do about 90 kilometers a day, something like that. So that's easily within a full charge for a van. Edmund King, the president of the AA, said that. Uh, he's always been at the, or his, his organisation's always been at the forefront of motoring innovation. And as far as membership surveys show, the number of plug-in vehicles is going to increase considerably. So that is why the AA is so keen on making sure that its uh, patrols can get people up and running again. David Martel, the chief executive of Chargemaster, says that in many ways the UK is now past the tipping point for electric vehicle adoption and the pace of change of the coming years will be quite dramatic. His company recognises that the charging infrastructure whether at home, uh, uh, work, public or is going to be uh, really critical to the amount of people who buy EVs and therefore they want support drivers to make the switch because guys, it's good for their business as well. He goes on to say that although many people are concerned about the number of charging points, the reality is that including dedicated units fitted at home, there are as many charging points in the UK as there are electric cars. 
the benefits now available to 15 million AA members mean that many more drivers will have the confidence to join the thousands of people moving to electric motoring every month. So, but let's have a look though at some of the concerns because the AA did a, a survey uh, using a populace of 16,629 people in July 2017 and uh, these are the things which people are worried about. 84% uh, are worried about the availability of charging points, 83% on the high purchase price of electric vehicles and that really is a very good point to be understood. Durability is a worry for 69% of people. Limited range is a worry for 61% of vehicle. Time taken to charge bothers 60% and the lack of choice and availability worries around half of those polled. So, um, how many of these points are myths? Well, uh, in the opinion of the AA, this, many of these barriers are indeed myths or it's, it's in the head. A uh, majority of people will of course charge overnight using off-peak electricity at home, so the time of the charge should not be an issue and indeed fast charges for people are providing it and 80% charge in less than half an hour are becoming increasingly common. Now, the purchase price of EVs, obviously, is falling and the quality of uh, and variety of models is increasing. Battery durability and range are also getting better. So, I think that uh, this is the way to be going. And now, finally, I would like to come back to what the point I started with. Is what about motorhomes? When will they become available? It's going to take some time. It's going to take, I don't know, uh, will we see electric motorhomes in this decade, let's say. So, so I'll give myself until 20, 2020. Um, perhaps not, but I think we, there will be a number of prototypes on the market for people to look at. Right, so that's all. I am going to say on this subject today but if you're interested I'm going to be returning to this um, here we've got um, so it's me and a couple of my mates um, we've got this plan of producing an electric uh, van we're trying to work out how to do it um, if you followed my series on my motorhome refurbishment you'll know that we uh, put 230 volt uh, electricity in the van and uh, we're trying now to build on this as an idea maybe uh, it would extend the range of uh, electric uh, vehicles but this is one thing we don't we don't know um, but we're certainly looking at but there are this, this is just like uh, three people in a garage and there are major automotive concerns which are working on this and uh, they will no doubt come up with solutions quite quickly, <laughs> I hope. <laughs>